truth of this is that there isn't much I don't know about you, right? Or do is there is there stuff I don't know about you? Uh, I I would say that you safely know every single core thing about me, more importantly, even if some details are missing. Sure. Sure. But I feel still in this moment and all the time we spend together, still real time in all of you. Yeah, you say that. I think you think I have my shit together. I don't know where you get that impression. It's not about that. <laughs> it, I it's the way, find it's, you. It's, my, it's, it's the way I walk. It's the way you move your arms like uh-huh. this, like mm-hmm. this, like this. I think you think that because I'm a parent, I have my shit together, when in reality, I'm still making it up, just like everybody else. Ah, but you do so gorgeously. But I, but I feign professionalism. You're a master of the make ups Yeah. That's what being a comedian is. Yeah. Master of the make ups Yeah. It's true. And it's, I find it endlessly inspiring. Thank you. I know you really, I really genuinely feel like you give me a lot more credit than I deserve. I think, speaking truthfully, I think it's a, a deeply spiritual uh, way of life. I think that's why I'm so in love with the uh, truly funny people in my life. I don't know that it's true mm. of uh, all funny people. I think a lot of people go for kind of uh, you know, obvious. So they kind of talk in rhythms that imply a joke, but mm. there's nothing in there. There's no content. No, and when then, you're not funny, you're not funny. Yeah. You're very, very inherently funny. Thank you. And I feel like it's probably what drew me to you before, like when we became friends. Like I, mm-hmm. I think it was because I, I was like, oh, oh, this broad gets it. Yeah. And they do get but, it. But you're also deep. You're very, very deep. Yeah. Like the majority of our time spent together is very... Like life affirming, deep conversations, and then also just like the the heavy hand in which you guide your life in terms of like your choices and your how you want to go about your day and how you take care of yourself is just like so together, like really just like a true true adult. See, I see you wincing. You don't think so? No, I I actually I I do and. Uh... Uh, I love that you see the truth in me mm-hmm. in that way. And I think for maybe one of the things I admire so much is that we can be in the middle of the deepest, you know, heaviest, what does it all mean, mm-hmm. existentially. Uh, on our t- TV programs, we both chose to make very existential shows. Yes. You know, um, but then I can watch you sort of flip like if a waiter comes over and we're eating and we're talking about it. And you can kind of like light up in the room that is so sort of loving and hilarious with such kind of seamless ease that that flip in you of the performer is innate and genuinely um, wants to bring joy, I think. And it's uh, the way that you're able to kind of hold both so uh, honestly is something I admire, a real, uh, I really admire it. It's the tap dance. Yeah. It's the wadaliacha. It's a wadaliacha because for me, I feel like I need to kind of uh, you know, I need to go outside. I need to like smoke a cigarette, and then I uh, and then I need to like reassemble before I can sort of shift from mm. a kind of a heaviness, mm. speaking about the truth and life and all this stuff. Before I, I personally think it's just a matter of blood sugar. I think that really, yeah, you can, you can figure it all out. With blood sugar. I have another theory, mm. which is that because of SNL and first the Groundlings, that there is. Uh, you know, a deep training ground in there that's very real, yes. that you take like a natural beast who I'm sure is a born a kind of a miracle and then you give them what's really a very formal education in a way of that under all conditions, the highest of stakes at like with the most pressure in the world, mm-hmm. deliver. Yes, very much so. Also like the like, like a Bible or like a, like a manual of like, here's the language of a comedy or improvisation these are the rules of improvisation because if you use these then things will move forward as opposed to if you know in layman's terms if you don't use uh you know if you, if you say no to a suggestion to mm-hmm. makes, makes the scene die so yes there's that like language that you're given which is nice because i like a road map i don't like mm-hmm. someone going like hey just the two of you sit in front of a jib and just talk because i don't like know that. what to say yeah. Ah, I enjoy it. I, I was going to say, I really enjoy sort of inhabiting, I think, a more um, surreal, sort of nebulous, mercurial space and then getting in there and sort of moving things around. I think it's a comes from a different school almost of mm-hmm. a sort of um, 
autodidact. And so I kind of, I enjoy. Oh, you like that? I enjoy it in the murkiness a bit. Interesting. Yes. So you like a lot more chaos than I do. I think so. Well, I mean, just in terms of like it creating like an energy for yeah, you. Whereas I like, I'm like, ah, yeah. mommy. Yeah, I like the feeling of the, 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 the right. intensity of it. I like the feeling of the energy of like live, like performance, yeah. like. Like this, like black in the room makes me feel like, do you like me? Yeah, As opposed I, I to like, I like... need to hear the audience going like, yeah, we're with you. To me, this reminds me so much of the set of uh, All That Jazz, the movie, oh because gosh. of, you know what I mean? The rafters That's and everything in the silence. That's why we like each other. That was, that was yeah. our, one of our favorite movies growing up in, like, in, the, in the quietness of, of, of childhood. Well, your first death could be what started this whole thing. Why? I mean, maybe it's not, but... Honestly, it's the only unknown factor that we have. Jahari window. You know, it's a known unknown. We got to trigger your memory. Why Russian Doll now? Because to me, the show is so all-encompassing of you and everything that you do. But it's interesting to me that you're doing it right now in your life because I feel like if people don't know you and everything that you are capable of but in front of and behind the camera, they may not, now Now they know, the secret's out. Like, sorry, but your secret's out, you're fantastic. But why did you, dis why is it now? Or is it more or less like, finally? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little of both. Because um, I understand it yeah. wasn't overnight. Yeah, and, and you know, sp speaking, it's frankly, uh, it's, it's, it's also, it's a bit of a, a challenge to kind of like receive so much positivity and almost asked myself like what took so long because you know obviously we've known each other for 20 years and uh i've been wired this way pretty much mm. the whole time you know um and i guess things just sort of uh appear on their own timeline yeah in a way um yeah because i feel like i want to even sort of i mean i'm asking like the universe why now because we never know but at the same time i almost want to say like in, cre in, in creating a show, sometimes as actors, we don't think that we can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, not everybody gets the memo like, oh, if you wanna, if you build it, they will come. Like, if you wanna do it, do it. Because only- That's what's so radical about it. Yeah. And also like, what took me so long to figure that one out? I know. I feel like I was telling myself like, oh no, you can't, you can't create your own stuff. And now I'm like, fuck it, I don't care. And well, I, I think it's a new era, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we're women, which means 97 different things. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also, though, I'd heard someone told me once uh, that you need to develop the talent to back up the talent. And Amen, ha hallelujah. In many ways, I think that that's why Russian Doll now and not five years ago or 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, yes, mortality and like, you know, this sort of inner panic of like, well, now that I actually am going to get to make things and um, I don't want to run out of time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, you know, is it possible that there sort of was no time before this one uh, where I actually would have been able to, um, you know, even uh, just show up for the good news of it, let alone the actual production. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think when you when you talk about chaos and the type of chaos that we're talking about is like, uh, uh, I was watching this Bergman documentary yesterday on the airplane. Just like a nice light yeah. Yeah, airplane flight. And I was like, oh, look, something for everyone. And they found it. Something for me, <laughs> the Bergman documentary. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's really, it's, it's, it's all about that. That's kind of making, making things is a kind of ongoing quest into sort of self and psychoanalysis and sort of what, is, what does it all mean? What's it all about? So I think that for me, when we talk about chaos and the arts, to me, what that means is, I like it in there. I like going in deep, mm -hmm. you know? So I think even, you know, writing uh, Russian novels, like years before the writer's room, by the time the writer's room, so intense, brain-breaking stuff. Like, here is Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Can we find a comedy show in here? Mm -hmm. You know? And then production, all night shoots, right? It's all in a loop. Uh, it's in the Oof. dead of winter. Post-production. A beast. I mean, just like three months of just endless, uh, you know, micro decisions and obsessive thinking and up all night kind of trying to, you know, make it work. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think I like that feeling. It's almost the chaos of the other side, which is kind of good tidings that you need the talent to back up the talent for, you know, which is yeah. to um, 
to experience it as not being a head trip. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think that maybe sometimes that that takes time to be a, a grown up who's uh, uh, ready for these things. You know? Yeah, uh, for sure. And, and speaking of, uh, you know, adulthood. Yes. Uh, inevitably, it only goes in one direction, uh, which is a spoiler alert. It's the end. The end. For all of us. For all of us. Uh, death. Why uh, did you similarly choose to uh, be interested in a show about mortality and why now? I feel like now, so much more than ever in my life, it is fascinating to me and I feel like it's, it's, it's an itch that I just want to scratch. I want to talk about it, I want to know more about it. And I, to be more specific, not just the idea of death, but the idea of what else is there? Is there anything else? Is this it? I mean, on a bad day, I'm going to say, like, this is fucking it. This is bullshit. Mm -hmm. And on a great day, I'm going to say, like, what if we get to see our loved ones? What if there's something else? What if this is the beginning? You know, how could how could we be here and experience all this joy and pain and beauty and art and 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 really just for what nothing mm -hmm. like absolutely nothing you fucked me up so good the other day because yes. you sent me she sent me um a youtube video what was it it was a time lapse go ahead it's a time lapse about the end of the world right uh, so yes it was a it was fantastic the cosmos. So, the, so you're really looking at the end of the universe you're yes. first you're looking at a time lapse that that speeds up every five minutes and then yeah. survive, like i mean it's but the end, the real end, the black hole end, end, end. Yes. I mean, it's trillions. We've got lots of time. We're going to be fine. Trillions like that whole thing about like, don't buy an apartment in Miami because it's going to go underwater. Yeah. Like we're fine right now. Ish. Ish. But we're fine. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and a whole island is coming in Hawaii. Like, oh, we're fine. The big super volcano. But what I'm talking about is like all this shit that we are busying ourselves with. Is, are, you know, are my eyebrows too thick or like, you know, like. I don't know if I should go blonde or, uh, you know, does he like me? And all this, like, minutia is like, when you look at the fucking earth and then you go, and then that's gone. And then there's a, in this thing, there's like a skeleton of the sun. I was like, yeah, the then sun there's going to be no record. Well. Then there's going to yeah. be like no record of like the Beatles. Like, Nothing. what are we doing it all for? Nothing. We're all going to be gone. Yet, and yet I would, <clears throat> uh, objectively uh, categorize both Russian Doll and Forever as being deeply optimistic, optimistic shows 100%. about, yes, they're about the human condition, yes, they're existential in nature, yes, life and death, but mostly life, ultimately. Like, they use Absolutely. death as a way in to talk about life and how much relationships matter, ultimately, which Absolutely. I've heard you talk about with Aon Yang, the, the showrunner on, on Forever, as being sort of key to... Uh, yours and Fred's interest. I feel like that's what set, um, I feel like there's a lot more death talk going mm -hmm. on in, in shows and that's really exciting and, and in entertainment, but I, and by the way, I'm right there. Like, I can't wait to see it, talk about yeah. it. I love it. You get to die and come back. I love it. Keep, keep yeah. dying. Keep okay. coming back. Keep uh -huh. like falling into manholes. I love it. But like the idea that like, no matter where you go, there you are. Like the, to me, the comedy of forever is the fact that like they're still in the banality of this marriage. And like you really think like, maybe I'm not so happy. I don't know. And then your husband dies and you're like, wow, I really I really didn't realize what I had. I had someone that loved me and I loved unconditionally. And yeah, we had challenges. But if I put all my stuff in a pot, I would take all my stuff back. Right. But then you're with them really f like for all eternity. And you're like, oh. What do you think is the best activity of all time when you have exactly half an hour? Half an hour. How about, mm -hmm. how about a bath? Great in theory, terrible in practice, see. On a sort of uh, deeper, sort of tangential but connected level, I would say that uh, for both of us also the experience was uh, I want it to mirror the true experience of the onset experience. I created uh, Russian all with um, Amy Poehler and Leslie Headland and the idea of getting to you know spend time in that way with Amy We had created mm. another show prior to that 
And it was in creating that other show that didn't happen that we were like, we want to spend more time getting to dig deep yeah. and kind of make things together. Um, an experience that I feel like you've really been leaning into, whether that's also with Amy as uh, when she directed and is in Wine Country with you, mm -hmm. but also with Fred Armisen and Catherine Keener uh, in, in Forever, this idea of like, how do I, right? Isn't, I feel like that's something that you're really interested in right now. Well, also that speaks, the, these people that we amass over time in our careers, right? Yeah. That speaks volumes to the example that you just gave about Russian Doll is working with Amy and knowing her all these years. You worked on something that didn't work and she's the one that said, this is like old soul, like I've got this, like I know yeah. you and I know you in work and here's how I, s sometimes it really helps to have our friends see us yes. and then say, this is how I think we need to fit A into B and all that. It's like, you know, when you wear a color and people are like, you look great. Like, I would never buy this for myself. Yeah. But your friend's like, you'd look good in purple. I think you look good in purple. Like, I don't buy purple, I buy black. Everybody buys black for themselves. Mm -hmm. But your friend was like, you know, you don't see, you can't get out of your own ass of all your, your own head trip stuff. But I see this fitting into this. And then you went, oh yeah, you're totally right. And that's the beauty too of like, this time in my life, this time in your life, mm -hmm. this time where not only do I want to create, but I also want to help facilitate creation. And I want to help watch my friends and the people and the other creative people that I know soar and tell their stories. Mm -hmm. You and I started a production company this year. Yes, we did. Um, called Animal, which I named really after you because you are a Fucking animal. A fucking like, animal. I'm not kidding. Like, you sit down and you're like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do boom, this. Boom, boom. And boom, 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 boom. And then your energy, I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to fucking do it oh all. Oh my God, you're right. We're going to do it. Yeah, because you're inspiring to me. So I make me want to do things. And you're just like, your appetite is voracious, but also incredibly clear. And now I'm starting to find too our speeds and what we're good at. And I'm like, you know what? I may not want to burn the midnight oil. I'm not like, I'm a lazy worker. But I like it. I have a good idea. Like, I think we should do this. You're like, that's it. Like, this is how yeah. we fit, right? My little animal. But, yeah. but the reason I bring it up is to say, I am very much at a place now where I feel like I'm excited to, I'm excited to be in the karaoke room and not be on the mic. Mm -hmm. I want to see other people sing. I want to be there and cheer them on because I don't want to be in the front of the camera for everything. I want to see stories being told and I'm not, the actor for all the stories I want to see, mm -hmm. right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I love sort of the biggest gift in a way of the success of, uh, you know, my show after whatever this is, 35 years in show business is that now I finally get to make things, mm -hmm. other things, things I'm not in. Yeah. I get to tell, like you're saying, I mean, that's why we started this production company is the idea of all these other stories that we want to tell. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reminded of a Brian Eno oblique strategy card oh. that says, uh, find where it's safe and make that your anchor. And I think I feel very much that way about you, yeah. uh, about Amy, about this idea of kind of like finding these sort of touchstones that let you feel settled enough to kind of like be your biggest self. Mm -hmm. um, and and I that's also yeah. part of growing up in that when you can admit things about yourself that you like and don't like and accept that about yourself, yeah. then you know where to lay that anchor down. Then you say like, this is where I'm more comfortable. Mm -hmm. why, why, am I dealing, why am I dealing with this? I feel more comfortable here. I feel more like my true self here. For my birthday, tell me if I'm a bad person. Okay, cool. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much, Nadia. Oh. I would like to dedicate this night to Chong, my uncle who also had a hard time saying thank you. <laughs> to Chong. Love you, Chong. 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 I wanted to ask you, you, uh, you know, are basically the Lon Chaney of voices. Uh, <laughs> you are a woman of 1,000 voices. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think so many things, you know, uh, a, a Whitney, uh, a Beyonce, uh, a Donatella, uh, you know, a June in Forever, Away We Go. Uh, I loved you in The Altman. The Prairie Home Companion. Thanks, babe. Chuck and Buck. Sure. I mean, it's uh, so extensive. How how do you, um, and because I love seeing you and to know how sort of 
big you can go. And earlier today, you described it almost as a version of drag. Mm -hmm. And then versus these really kind of nuanced sort of superhuman performances like in Away We Go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or I would say really forever. And June in Forever is yes. a similarly like a very dense, beautiful portrait. How do you go about finding the voices of your characters? I feel like when I get to play a real person, it's so sexy to me because I never mm -hmm. get to be a real person. I, I feel so loud and big and gregarious and um, it's so enticing to me when someone wants me to be a real human being. Um, and also I'm like, wow, I get to be a girl? Like, this is so cool. <laughs> but um, I think that June might be the most normal person I've ever played, which I found really fascinating because I don't really know how to be normal. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm, I'm fast. I, I should, I should preface that by saying, cause obviously I'm an actor. I'm not, you know, like I have to know how to be, but I, I I'm fascinated by normal people because I don't feel like <laughs> one. And I, and I've never really been challenged to do just that. Like the, the, someone who's living a life that they're, that, that they feel is a little bit mundane, but they're also incredibly comfortable with at the same time. And the wants are not big wants. They're just sort of like dissatisfied with the comfortable amounts that are in front of them. Um, wow. as, a, as, as feeling like an other my whole mm -hmm. life, I feel like I've studied normal people my entire life. I felt like I've always been on the outside looking in of like what normal is. Like I'm literally the generation that like when I was filling out, you know, like the SAT, I had to put down other for race, right? Like there was like one, mm -hmm. you gotta pick one, I put other. So like this other thing for me is like this big billboard of myself in my own head, when in reality people are like, calm down, we, in, it's, it's not that big a deal, but it's in me, it's, it's my whole story. But it is, uh, <clears throat> you know. Yeah, and I I think when I when other humans think that I can play a normal person, I find it deeply seductive. Like, wow, you 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 really you, yeah, but you really think I'm capable. There of it. is something, you know. It's it's a it's a funny thing because you know we're always put in these positions where you're supposed to speak about self with this sort of like, you know, faux or, or genuine humility, right? Of course, right. like the actor's life is a very self cudgeling proposition of mm -hmm. pretty much you you know you're a good actor because you've gone home kicking yourself about what you could have right. done better and differently. Right. Uh, but there's, you know, uh, the, the truth is, is that the performance, like your normal is so dense and so rich and so, uh, Cassavetes-esque for lack of a better term, because the attention to the detail of it, and I, I think it's because you are a, a very dense, very human, I mean, you have four children, like your sense of the meaning of life is very kind of concrete and therefore the ability to study it sort of at all times, the, yeah. the micro feelings of things. And in June, in Forever, I see like such a beautifully layered, textured performance around all these kind of like small sort of moments of self-doubt and sort of choosing Keener over Fred's Oscar and kind of there's so many small moments that are just, I think, uh, exquisite in a true masterclass of just genuine acting. You well, just, make no mistake, right. like the, the, the dream of like, you know, I feel very lucky that I've been able to like show all my comedy mm -hmm. cards, but I never, but I, when, I, when I say make no mistake, I'm saying like the pain is right under the surface as we yeah. all know. We all know that the clown or clowns are very much the deep, dark, sick motherfuckers. And Yes, and, that's why I love you guys. And, yes, yes. And, and, and that's the thing that when you when you start out doing comedy, people don't people only want to see you as that, mm -hmm. and you want to say like, "Sorry, buddy, but I'm really, really like depressive and moody, and I, I I've got some dark shit. I'm I would be happy to share. It's so easily accessible um, because I, at least in my case, I feel like the comedy was the armor that I built to to protect this really soft, mushy center. Um, mm -hmm. that I'm so very protective of. So all that stuff is really easily accessible. And I think I thought when I started working that like that would be a normal trajectory. Like you get to do some comedy and then some like, mm -hmm. you know, pepper some a little sadness in there and be kind of all. And it took a while for people to kind of stop saying like, 
Wow, you're being serious. It's like, who, yeah, because I'm a human being. Who do you love? Were there people that you would see? Like, was it kind of like a Madeline Kahn or a, a Madeline Gilda Kahn Radner? Was, or yes. was it like a Jenna Rollins? Who were you looking at? I was very much like a combo of like, as a kid, like, I thought Madeline Kahn was everything. And yeah. I thought, oh, that's what I'm going to do. That's, right. that's, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Like, a hot, sexy, funny lady who might sing but is deeply hilarious but is like, her hair yeah. is super cute. And then, um, like, there's just something about her femininity that I want. Like, she's such a woman, even in, like, History of the World Part 1 when she's singing, yes, no, 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 yes. Like, <laughs> so fucking, yeah. she's so hot. And she's also just, like, so cool. I think, like, the com like comedy guy's idea of cool to me was, like, everything growing up. But then, but then we had this thing called the Z Channel when I was growing up, which mm -hmm. was just, like, a California thing. And... Full of zebras? It was full of zebras. Yes, like, and that's where we all learned to act. <laughs> it was basically like if the new art theater or like the uh, Angelica were mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, a channel. And I watched the weirdest movies on there. And then, of course, like I fell in love. Like I thought Mommy Dearest was great when I was a kid. And I thought like all that jazz was fantastic when I was a mm -hmm. kid. Like I didn't know what I was watching. I just knew I loved it and it was for me. Hey, what do you think is the all-time best way to sit ever. It's easy. Cross-legged, left over right. Okay. Like when you were growing up and looking at stuff, what in the hell were you watching? Because I feel like, I feel like when I think Cassavetes, I think like you must have seen it at a young age. Well, I do think that for me, well, I loved uh, a Madeline Kahn, let's say. You did. I really was also more focusing, and especially as I became a teenager, on even like the Peter Falks mm -hmm. or the Seymour Cassells, or I was like, what's even, um, what's Gene Wilder doing? I think I started, and almost like a curiosity, was like, who is this Mel Brooks? Mm -hmm. Or like in the other day uh, for my birthday in, in New York, not here, where for my birthday we screened Lena Wertmuller's Seven Beauties. That was really something. It was really something to put through people through, yeah. um, but it was great. And but in New York, King of Comedy, and I was like, I think as a kid I wasn't even sure if I was more obsessed with uh, what Scorsese was up to or De Niro, you know, in this way. And why have to choose, right? Yeah, like I was always just so sort of consumed by both, but I, but I think naturally leaned towards sort of uh, a, a darker male kind of a thing, and yeah. then um, in. Russian novel, what was fun was to sort of create a role for myself where I could embody both in this way that, you know, essentially that character was based on Elliot Gould's performance of Philip Marlowe in mm -hmm. Altman's Long Goodbye, mm -hmm. meaning not Jack Nicholson's, you know, Marlowe in Chinatown or a Humphrey Bogart Marlowe. It was specific to that. And I was like, I think that's a nut I can crack, which feels kind of like just in my sweet spot of like dense and sort of funny, self-aware and all these things. Well, yeah, I get the joke sometimes when I, yeah. you know, I, it's a cheat, but because I know you, I see, I, I see where the, where the joke is, is snickering underneath a little yeah. bit of the, like, when I feel the, like, Peter, you know, the Peter Falk in there, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I, like, I, like, I know that she's, like, enjoying the, like, the hands and the coat yeah, and I like, the, like it nod there. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are you uh, watching these days? What am I doing later? Yeah, like, what are you, seriously, I feel like this talk has gone really well. Like, I what, mean, like, what are I'm we going to... I'm sorry if I'm leaning in, but, like, what are you uh, going to get into later? Like, like post-interview and stuff. Like, like what's you know, your like scene pizza, these days? Like, pasta, like, and, like even ice cream? I, well, you know, I love ice cream. I, I've been feeling like a failure sometimes. It's really nice. They they let you fly on a... a Netflix will fly me here. Sure. They offer you ice cream. I ask for a double... What's wrong with me? Uh, cuckoo pants. What's wrong with you is, you is is you're doubling your pleasure. Yeah, I'm living my life. You know what I mean? Mortality. Um, what what do you have prefer? you been watching lately? Oh, I uh, just got into Fosse Verdon uh, last night. Great. Um, I'm very behind on a lot of other streaming shows. The last show I streamed was Russian Doll before mm -hmm. that. Um, and it was perfect because I never get to like get sick mm -hmm. and like lay down in my house. Yeah. And I watched the whole damn show in one day, which was like, I was like, oh, now I get why people stream stuff. You're like, give yeah. me more, give me more, give me more, give me more immediate. I need to know what happens next. And I really did want to have the experience of watching the show from beginning to end. Oh, because, it's a loop. Because it's a loop. Yeah, but there's something in mm -hmm. there that's like... Again, it's that scratching the surface feeling for me. I'm like, I, it's an itch I want to scratch. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why is it a loop? Why yeah. is there a split screen it's at the end? Life. It's all the same day over and over. We think it's changing. 
but you know, only we change.